Boom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the monthly Contrix GitHub ad admin team meeting. Uh, I will be your host today. Uh, and with that, let's sort of kick off with the sort of regular stuff. This is a recorded meeting. We all abide by the CNCF code of conduct, which essentially boils down to please be excellent to each other. Um, and with that, we can go right into it. Uh, so it looks like you have the, the first, oh, update the meeting info to include the password. I thought I thought it was in there. Um, maybe it's maybe it's Outlook. <laughs> I'll, I'll check, but the the meeting I have does not include the the password. Okay, yeah, the the meeting link that I clicked had it. It might also be like the either the one in the doc or the one actually like in the text itself that might not have it. Yeah. I also know George has plenty of problems with Outlook as well and that sort of thing. Uh, I'm checking my Google one too, and it, the meeting link is not in there. Or rather, hmm. the meeting link does not include the password in it. Interesting. Um, I'll, I'll take a look at that uh, after the meeting. Uh, uh -huh. Wait, next. I have two meeting links, of course, because that's how <laughs> calendars work. Um, one has the correct bits, so ignore me. It's all good. <laughs> I, I Calendars are hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Nikita, can you talk now? I uh, will take that as a no. So the next thing on the list was to, uh, it, it's been a little bit of time and we wanted to promote the new member coordinators to approvers. Um, no, we can't, okay, we cannot hear you. Okay, uh, I will. I will continue with, you know. You know what? Um, I will go to like my little note real quick, and then we will we'll come back to see if uh, your your audio and everything's fixed by then. Actually, she's uh, gone. She's, gone. <laughs> she's gone and she's back now. <laughs> okay. Well, the little note that I have is that. Uh, GitHub has slowly been rolling out the uh, recognition beta. Uh, it has not been applied to the Kubernetes project yet. I will let the admins and the general community know once it is available. That will probably be uh, sometime next week. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, Irvi, do uh, you want to kick off with your issue in there? And then we can see if Nikita is back by then. Uh, OK. Uh, actually, I'm not sure if uh, this is uh, a right place to bring up these issues. But uh, the thing is, currently, we, we put and remove the label uh, for the label hold for the website documentation uh, manually. So when one create a PR for the KK and then create a PR with uh, for the K website, then uh, a hold label will put uh, manually in the K website, uh, and it will be removed once uh, the KK PRs is merged. So I was wondering if it's possible to kind of create an actions uh, to automatic uh, to make this uh, automatic. I, I don't know of any method that we could do to really like automate that off the top of my head. Um, does anyone else have thoughts on that one? Christoph, we can't hear you either. I also do not have the Brady Bunch style <laughs> of view, so I don't see people's faces. I have no idea if people are talking or not. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Thank you, Stephen, um, <laughs> for calling out that you couldn't hear me. Um, so we have looked into this before. 
and the conclusion we drew at the time is it would the the amount of like the corner cases was this is basically like a hold until another PR emerges dependency um, as cross repo. We've talked about it before. It's actually there's some technical issues with it uh, with um, tokens, like the amount of tokens that it would use uh, for, uh, for our, our GitHub automation um, to do that polling because it isn't something that GitHub would necessarily push to us. And then we keep track because Proud doesn't actually hold state. Um, so, yeah, it, it, we looked into it actually fairly recently within the past few months it came up. And the conclusion was it's too much work to try and support it and overcome the technical challenges for the corner cases that we have. This is a corner case, this is a case that we hadn't heard about and makes total sense. And I'll make sure to add into the issue so that if we revisit this, we kind of have this log that like, hey, the docs team would potentially like to use this too. Um, but yeah, I, I just, uh, the, the, the technical issues with it, I don't know that we're, we're gonna tackle this anytime soon. Okay, so basically I'm I'm from the Sick Docs and we just have kind of like quarterly meeting yesterday and this issues is bring up in the meeting. So that's why I, I come to this meeting as well. Great, and we appreciate, we appreciate the engagement. Um, the, so this, this team doesn't necessarily, isn't directly responsible for this. Like the Prowl automation would normally be stick testing, but I'm also like involved in a bunch of stick testing stuff. So I could, I could speak to it. So um, I'll link you the issue uh, in our, in our notes um so that you kind of have it and basically have the decision that like you know we aren't we probably not going to tackle this right away because of some of the technical challenges but i'll add in a note about yeah like the the, the docs team is is interested in this too if we ever get around to it and or, or figure out a way to overcome the technical challenges okay thank you Okay. With that, uh, Nikita, are we back to your audio working? I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about was promoting uh, the new membership coordinators to approvers. They've been doing really amazing work and being super responsive to all the membership requests. So I think it's time we promote them to approvers. And uh, the other one thing I noticed, like when, uh, like during onboarding them, uh, during the onboarding period, I know we've uh, discussed a lot of questions and like things that weren't documented before. So uh, as an aside, we should also make sure we document them. But uh, yeah, I think I think it's time to promote uh, promote MCs to approvers. What does everyone else think? I'm all for it. At plus one. Um, okay, I will create a PR after this meeting now. Uh, Nikki, you also have the next item. Yeah. Um, so this was uh, just something I wanted to toss out, an idea I wanted to toss out here and get a pulse of what y'all think. So um, I've been working on the approval plugin with Bob and another coworker of mine, so I tracked him into this. And we have a POC right now. We need to write the cap. There are some edge cases that we need to figure out, but Cranville uh, also like a rejects uh, filtering in Ernest files works right now. And you can also like specify a uh, rejects for approving. So you can select slash approve and then list the files that you want to approve to. Um, so I will create a cap and like formally ask 
reach out to you all for review later on. So it's not ready for review yet. What I wanted to talk about was, um, what do you all think about a test org, like I don't know, Kubernetes test or something like that for testing such broad prow or release engineering changes? I say release engineering only because I know we've talked about a fork of AK uh, before. It. Um, so I just want to get, get a pulse of what you all think for a, a dummy org. Uh, and to just also add on to that, for publishing what we now we use an uh, arc called Kubernetes nightly. It, it was just created for historical reasons and we've been using it to test changes. So something like that, but for Prow. Oh, come on, Aaron. <laughs> okay. um, I'm personally in favor of this, um, at least from the release engineering perspective, it's something that we had submitted a, a while back um, and didn't really get traction on. Um, we have a lot of tools that we kind of mock the GitHub workflow for pushing, pulling, checking branches, whatnot, but we don't have a way of essentially testing these in near prod scenarios. Um, outside of using an org and ideally the org would be uh, blessed by the Kubernetes project. Um, so at least from the rel engine, uh, rel end side, I'm, I'm plus one for this. Aaron, I, I know you're muted, but can you, um, do you have like a good alternative to another org or someone could test like a rewrite of the approved plugin? Um, so to the question for why an org versus specific repos, so like for broad changes, like maybe rewrite of an approval plugin that can't be gated behind a config option. We can't, I mean, if we enable it, it'll get enabled everywhere. Um, we can obviously like hash out the design and uh, talk more about it once we get a cap open, but for such changes, what would we do? So follow up question from Aaron, why can't we gate behind a config option? Um, um, so this one is, this one, so like at least the rewrite of the approval plugin, I can talk about that. Um, it changes completely how approval looks at files. So initially when you look at, when the approval plugin looks at, which directories and files to consider for approval. It just looks at owner's files. Now we would be looking at individual files. I think I can like talk more about this when we have a design cap open, um, but it's hard to add a config option. I'm also totally okay with an approved to plugin if that's how we want to go. I, uh, but that would involve a lot of duplication of code. But I also agree, like, I don't want to keep adding all odds, but I just want to get a pulse of what you'll think. Yeah, we had pre, like Nikita and I had previously discussed the approved two plugin, uh, you know, approved two but before looking at the, like all the interdependencies with it all. And that's sort of what led to the uh, idea of potentially another org. Okay. Is there, um, <clears throat> Aaron, is there specific objections that you have to another org or is it just the idea in general of, of not wanting to add in more that we need to administer? Okay. I, I come from the perspective of, I agree that we don't want to add more orgs and add more overhead that we need to administer if, if there's like feasible, reasonable technical alternatives. Um, I think there's a couple different reasons why we'd be looking at a 
a staging org, um, <clears throat> being both, you know, potentially this, this, uh, um, the like a stage having a staging prow that we can roll things to, which I actually like the idea of a staging prow because there's been a lot of cases where we've had like code changes to prow that we haven't found until we got into production, but that would involve a conversation with um, testing. Yeah. Apparently there was Which a staging looks like proposal. there was a proposal back from April. So that, that may be something that we talk with sick testing about and be like, how do we do this? And uh, if we have a staging prowl, it would make the most sense for it to be like, have a separate webhook on a separate org. Um, aside from that, the other use case that I'm seeing and hearing here is um, for our release infrastructure and being able to have kind of a, a staging environment for the release infrastructure. Um, I also definitely see value in that uh, because, you know, historically there has like, these have been actually pretty good recently. Um, I haven't really seen or heard anything and that's uh, credit to uh, Stephen and the release management team. But historically, I'm thinking back years, we've definitely had things where uh, uh, good old Anago has gone haywire and has done things that it shouldn't do. Um, <laughs> So having a staging environment for that also wouldn't be a bad thing. Um, so but my, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't necessarily want to shoot down this idea completely, but I do think we need to flush out those two use cases. And I think engaging with uh, release management and SIG testing um, could – I, I don't want us as GitHub management to take it on if we're not going to get buy-in from testing and release. If testing and release are alongside with us and have plans of like, okay, this is how we can use it, this is how we can set it up, it's worth the overhead to get another org in place, then uh, basically I'd say I could be convinced that this is like a good idea for a couple different reasons. Yeah. Given given the changes, I'm I'm also wondering if these sound like different orgs. Um, the there's also the the discussion about feature branches and forks and stuff, and that I'm not sure where we left it exactly. Um, whether how people felt about that, um, but I had reserved um, orgs for that purpose in case we decided to go that route. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm open uh, from the release management perspective. It would definitely be a nice to have um, just for our tooling. Um, we are getting to the point where the tooling is much safer than it used to be um, and hoping to destroy a Naga by the end of the year. Um, we'll see if that happens. Uh, um, that was that was my uh, initial uh, thing that I said on on KDev from the last Anago um, debacle. Um, but we'll see. I think we're I think we're close. Um, but having having something to test safely against both the um, the uh, release engineering proper as well as publishing bot, which is also release engineering, but um, there are a select few who have access to do things there. Um, so kind of merging those streams and figuring out where we need to go forward would be um, necessary. I'm also curious who has uh, ownership of like, is, is Kubernetes nightly is like a thing, our thing, or is it kind of an org owned by, um, the it's publishing owned by only owners? by, it's owned only by Stefan and them right now. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that at the, should probably change at some point. Yeah. At the bare minimum, we want to change that. Yeah. Um, so Coming back to the whole new art point, I just wanted to get like an initial pulse and feedback about it. And um, this is helpful feedback and I'll come back to this problem to sick testing and other things with when I have more concrete info and a cap and like a solid plan. It's kind of helpful. 
yeah, that, that, that sounds good to me. Like my initial gut feeling is I really like the idea of an approved to plugin, even if it's like a bunch of code copying and then we like rip out the old approved plugin when, when we're done, um, with the amount of changes that are going to go in and <clears throat> user education and that kind of stuff. Like I think having, having an approved to plugin and being able to switch it on for certain repos, I think is, I think it's a way to go like to do and doing that in the live environment, not necessarily like a staging environment. Um, but yeah, I, I think a cap is, good and necessarily look forward to that very, very, very much. Okay. Um, we have at least seven minutes left. Is there any more discussion on this? Uh, I think the next item was either backlog walkthrough or I actually see our no. Our no's, uh, yeah. Yeah, should yeah. do that. Do you want to uh, talk about it? Uh, it's just one action I need from Aaron, I think. <laughs> and also, b basically, the idea is to migrate every pre-summit and post-summit job to the new GK cluster. But before that, we need to create a token related to the different bots and also Slack. Um, be, because we, there's a job related to templates that need a token, a Slack token. So I want to know what's the process to create those tokens in the new cluster. Uh, he says, uh, try paying test in for on call to get a new token. Um, or, yeah, to get the secrets added over over there. Uh, if you need a new Slack token, just ping in Slack admins, and essentially it pops up asking us to approve any sort of requests. And uh, when that happens, we would just uh, you know hit yes. We by default like essentially just hit no on any new token request. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have five minutes left. Uh, is there anything anyone else wants to talk about? Okay. I don't think it's uh, GitHub Actions Policy. Ah, that is a good one. We were talking about this the, the other day. Uh, thanks for bringing that up again, Aaron. So currently we have GitHub Actions enabled by default uh, across every org and every repo. Now, historically we've had, you know, GitHub Actions is very similar to things, you know, Travis and other sort of like third party um, bots or in, in integrations. And our previous policy with those have been to you know, have people file requests to enable it for that. Uh, do we want to potentially disable GitHub Actions across the orgs and have people go through the same process for us to enable it? This is mostly so that way we can sort of keep track of what's actually happening where. And there are definitely instances where we might want to ask people to use Prow instead of, you know, GitHub Actions. Yeah, I'm kind of plus one to disabling it. I think there are maybe some repos that already have it on today, though. Yes, there are. There, there's. Yeah. Uh, I know of two that Contribex owns, um, and I think there's a few others out there uh, that are using them as well. Yes, I, I am also. Huh? Just adding to the list. Uh, the Kubernetes clients, they use, uh, some of them use GitHub Actions. 
uh, okay. if they're not using Travis. Yeah, at, at this point, I think most of the people are shifting off Travis to use GitHub Actions instead because Travis has made some policy changes that make it more difficult to integrate. Uh, Can we possibly like send this out and put a deadline, like uh, a timeline to it that uh, maybe in one month it's going to be disabled because people who just rely oh. on GitHub Actions, I think the Java client. Yeah, yeah we, we wouldn't out. just like blanket, you know, just mm -hmm. at a turn of dime, turn it off. Um, so th there would definitely be notifications about that sort of thing. Um, okay. Cool. Aaron also asks uh, if we want to maintain a whitelist of allowed actions uh, as it is in attack vector uh, is like in third party actions changing to like potentially exfiltrate secrets. Uh, that was actually sort of the root uh, issue that sort of surfaced this. Uh, I can I can link it it's from uh, in the the Korg repo. Yeah, there was one that popped up from uh, from Tim Bannister as well, I think, in KK, around uh, oh. locking down the .dot GitHub workflows. Uh, yep. He, folder. You think, uh, yeah, I think that's he cross posted that to Korg, and that was the one that I was thinking of. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't think we need to like. I would go ahead and disable actions on on KK, KK. but yeah. like specifically, the the current owners are GitHub admins, or the, you know the people that prove are GitHub admins. So I'm, I'm I wouldn't be concerned about KK. Yeah, I think it's sufficient now, but I would say probably disabling on KK is 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 fine. Yeah. Um, we are just about out of time. I don't know if we want to continue to talk about the whitelist of allowed actions uh, or take it to you know the issue or next meeting. I think, yeah, uh, I, I, I think as far as like actions, I suggest that we take, we, we take the action that we put out notice and disable it across the org. Um, <clears throat> and then if you want it, you need to come and ask for it. And when you come and ask for it, basically we give you the disclaimer of, if you're going to take on doing actions, like, you know, here's a bunch of caveats, here's a bunch of things you should be aware of if you're going to use GitHub Actions. And also look here is Prow and it's shiny and that's what the rest of the org uses and this is what we prefer you use. But if you really want to do actions, just like what basically what we've said as far as Travis or Circle or um, OpenStack CI or like the other CIs that we have, if you want to do it, you're responsible for it, but and make sure you take ownership and don't just like random shit in. GitHub slash workflows. Do your due diligence. Yeah, I, I am okay with that one. Um, we are also at time at this point. So yeah, I, I think, you know, discuss any potential, we'll, we'll confirm all this stuff on the issue of the tactic we want to take with white, you know, potential whitelisting or just putting the onus on repo owners. Um, and then set up the timeline for sending the notification out to KDEV and, you know, turning them off org wide. And is there any last other last minute items people want to get in or that we should be aware of? Y'all are awesome. <laughs> okay, we, uh, we will call it there. Thank you everyone <laughs> for attending. I will see you all around Slack Bye. or the next Bye. call.